So, whose nerve will hold best in Scotland? All the top three in action this midweek. We start tonight live at Rugby Park, Kilmarnock, home to Rangers, with the rest hoping for an upset. Rangers do have the winning habit, don't they? And a mean streak. When they get in front, they tend to hold on. This time last year, they were seven points clear and no one could catch them on the run-in, even though Celtic did better from this point on and collected more points to narrow the gap. It was Rangers' year for the ninth year running. But a different story now. Rangers are top, but there's nothing in it. Rangers and Celtic, identical points and goal difference. Rangers top because they've scored more goals so far. And Hearts also level on points. Who's to say they cannot keep it up? So this is the big moment for Walter Smith and Rangers. They can go clear on top, and surely he must be saying to his players, they must do that tonight. Brian Laudrup has had a roasting today by Ajax. More on that a little later. And what role for Gascoigne tonight? Bit part player, effectively, in the past couple of months for Rangers, and that's surely not enough for him in World Cup year. So Rangers, with a big job on, here tonight. And hello there, very good evening to you. The run-in starts here tonight. Celtic are on fire, Hearts keep on winning, but somehow Rangers still find themselves top of the table, even though it's been a dreadfully difficult couple of months for them on and off the field. Trevor Stephen, former Rangers star, joins myself and Charlie Nicholas here tonight. Do they still have that edge, Trevor? Yeah, I, th I think they do because, uh, you know, Walter Smith wants to go out on a high uh, to get that 10th championship in a row. And... Uh, it's coming down to the last quarter, not far off that, and this is where it really does start to heat up. And uh, tonight is a big game. Um, Celtic play tomorrow night. Rangers would like to go into tomorrow morning ahead, um, and not just one point ahead, three points ahead if they can. Charlie, do you see it as a must-win game? I think, it, I think it is. I think because Celtic and Hearts keep winning, and I think they're, they two have been playing better than Rangers. Rangers have the more potential for them to find. That's why they maybe just edge it as being favourites. But the other two are just waiting on the mistake and they'll pounce. Here live tonight on one in the Scottish title race. It's Kilmarnock against Rangers from Rugby Park. Come on, Kelly! Rangers from Kilmarnock Park. So, Kilmarnock do something to improve what's been a dismal record against the old firm clubs. Notably against Rangers. Total of 156 meetings. Kilmarnock have won just 23 and one of the last 14 games against Rangers. That is not a good record. Rugby Park is not much better for Kilmarnock. Only 17 wins and the last of those, May 1994. Well, one big team news story already. We know for Rangers that Sebastian Rosenthal is back into the starting lineup. A first league start for the Chilean international. Uh, he got a goal against St Johnston in the Cup a year ago, but his time at Rangers blighted by injury overall. He's back in. Big night for him. Davy Proven will confirm the rest of the lineups. Davy. Yeah, I can also confirm that uh, the inclusion of Sebastian Rosenthal is the major talking point here at Rugby Park uh, tonight, Paul. Just two reserve games he's had and half of a B international against England, but he goes straight in tonight and it'll certainly be interesting to see whether or not he goes the full 90 minutes. Let me take you through the Kilmarnock side first, though. Gordon Marshall plays his third game for Kelly after ending a seven-year association with Celtic last month. Jim Laughlin misses out because of flu, and that means a return for club captain Ray Montgomery, now free from suspension. In midfield, Mark Riley plays his 11th successive game, a run that has yielded three goals for the little midfielder. And further forward, Jim McIntyre is starting just his second league game of the season due to a serious knee injury. His partner, Paul Wright, the club's top scorer with 12 goals this season. And wide on the right, now fully recovered from a broken jaw, He's missed the last four games. It's Pat Nevin, and he wears number seven. To Walter Smith's side, and a win tonight would make it three league wins in a row over Kilmarnock. Andy Gorham, only one of a number of players rumoured to be leaving Ibrox at the end of the season, wears number one. Jockey Bjorklund makes his 31st appearance of the season. He's still looking for his first goal of this campaign. Beside him, wearing number four, Richard Goff, who's off to California and a new contract with San Jose Earthquakes next season. Paul Gascoigne comes off the bench for his 15th start this term. 
Although he's managed just three goals in that spell, he was the number eight as usual. And up front former Perugia striker Marco Negri has now fully recovered from a freak eye injury. He got playing squash. He's the country's top scorer with 35 goals to his name so far. Paul? Copying the example of the legend Mr Clough from years ago playing squash in his days off. <laughs> what do you make of Rangers lineup overall, Trevor? That looks a, a pretty strong lineup. Obviously with Rosenthal in there and Negri, they're going to be two out and out strikers. Um, Laudrup, therefore, depending on how Walter sees it, will support those two guys and have freedom to move around. Um, he's brought back Jonas Turn, he's brought back uh, Paul Gascoigne, which I think Walter Smith at the start of the season thought this was going to be the two that he was going to build his team around. It's not really proved that way over the season, but I think it is um, a, a, a good link-up. Both of them have missed games recently, and this is a freshness uh, about the Rangers team that Walter thinks is going to get them the victory tonight. Charlie, it's going to be hard for Kilmarnock to be fresh, isn't it? Because they got yeah. drummed by Celtic again at the weekend. Yeah, they did, and they all down to one man in particular, and Harold Bratbag, but in saying that, I thought they looked as if they played for me on Saturday, a team who were comfortable in their league position, and their defensive unit just didn't get the offside right. Uh, Larson, who was impressive, again for Celtic with his, his quick thinking, beat the offside trap here. And does ever so well. Kamara claim it's offside, but we don't see the proper angle because by the time the ball's travelled 15 yards, uh, brought back should be clever enough to see the position, keep himself one side, and he's off flying with another tap in. But you know that you could gradually see the conference coming back on Saturday, Paul. I've got a performance for you. Well, I it's always impressive if uh, if the home team is scoring four goals. I think it's uh, could have been a hatful more as well. Yeah, for, exactly. For Brattback, he could have had six or eight. Yeah, I think I think it's important that uh, as Charlie, Charlie and I were discussing it uh, earlier on that Celtic fans are still not convinced that uh, you know it's a, it's a championship winning team and uh, they are scoring goals. They're not conceding at the back. They well and truly uh, beat Kilmarnock on Saturday, and you know th there's every reason why they should uh, go forward with confidence. Are they convinced about Brat back now, Charlie? After this rush of goals, <laughs> five in the last two. Well, no, they aren't. I think there's a few. I'm saying are they delighted now because the confidence that you gain from scoring like this, and the, obviously the, the media attention is now saying, oh, maybe that this guy is going to time it perfect for Celtic to take the Bills Championship. But it was quick thinking again from Larson. But you have to look back at Brat back in Saturday. I was there. And he must thank his teammate for so much. Jackie McNamara made him a star again during the week in the cup tie, which we had live. And again on Saturday, it was Larson, Burley. And it was time and time again, he could have scored eight goals on Saturday. OK, so his teammates do the work, but you, you keep labouring the point, and so does Andy Gray, and you're absolutely right. It's the hardest job in the game. It's the most precious job in the game, the man who can put the ball in the net. Now, does Celtic have a player to rival Negri in this? They do, because of the way he plays. Here again, it's the third goal. A little bit clumsy maybe for some people, but he scored three goals, it's three tap-ins, and people go, who does that remind you of? And the people that it reminds me of is McCoy and Negri. Mm -hmm. And you don't get any better goal scorer records than these two guys. They keep winning the championship year after year. So maybe this guy doesn't need to be the best player in the world. If he's going to score goals for them, and he's got a quickness about him, here's the hunger. For me, this, is, this sums up the finish of a perfect weekend for him. A very, very confident player, a nice nutmeg, and that is more a bit of quality that you've seen from Harold Bratback. And that's a video nasty for Kilmarnock. Will they be spurred on by what they did not do at the weekend tonight, Trevor? I think uh, if they're not spurred on, they're going to be in trouble because uh, Rangers know the task. Uh, they, they know they've got to keep winning, uh, whether that be at home or away, and they're going to have to go out and do it, and Kilmarnock, they're up against it tonight. Let's hear from the Kilmarnock boss, Bobby Williamson, with Davy Proven. Bobby, do you look upon this game tonight as the ideal opportunity to wash away the disappointment of the Celtic game? Yeah, that's the way we've got to look at it, Davy. It's a big game for us tonight, and uh, if players don't want to perform tonight, they'll never perform. What went wrong at the weekend? You don't normally give away goals as cheaply as you did. That's right. We've been defending quite well since the turn of, turn of the year. And Saturday, I don't know what happened. I think it was a lot of lack of concentration at times, and we get punished for it. What kind of performance is it going to take tonight to get something? Well, we've got to play the top of our form, to be honest. Uh, you look at Rangers' team, it's a uh, million pounds worth of talent out there. Rosenthal's come in, we've got Negri, Loudrop, Gascoigne. I'm getting a wee bit frightened there, keep talking. But uh, it's up to what we do, Davey. If we, we go about our business in the right manner, don't give anything away, really, and hopefully get a wee bit of break. You need a wee bit of luck on the night, hopefully we can get something. What about your season in general? Because you're lying fourth. Is that a pleasant surprise to you, given the, the limited resources you've had to work with? Well, to be honest, I thought we had a good squad last year, Davey. We went on the cup run and uh, we, we strung a few results together near the end of last year. We got ourselves out of relegation difficulties. 
and this year we, we had a difficult start to the season, so I'm not, I'm not really totally surprised. I felt like we were quite capable of competing with most of the teams in this league, and that's the way it's proved to be, and uh, if we can just add a wee bit more, we'd be delighted. Are you casting your eyes towards Europe again? Well, we'll let other people talk about that, David. I don't want to be disrespectful to our clubs that are challenging for it. It's up at the end of the season. If you're there, you deserve to be there, and uh, we'll wait and see how that goes. Well, be thanks. Enjoy the game. Cheers, David. You too. Big games coming one after another in England and Scotland on Sky Sports this week. Tonight it's Kilmarnock against Rangers in the hunt for the Scottish Championship. Two meetings between these sides so far this season. Rangers have scored seven, conceded one and collected six points so far. Marco Negri making an early impression as a Rangers goal scorer at Kilmarnock. Trevor, overall his contribution? Well, as far as the statistics are concerned, you'd have to travel a long way to see anything better. He's, uh, he's a poacher of goals. Uh, it doesn't add a great deal to the actual play of the Rangers side, but he's always there on the end of things. And and surely got, that's all Rangers were looking for. Absolutely. When you've got somebody like Loudrup uh, producing uh, corners, uh, opportunities, you know, he just, uh, doesn't have to move too far from the six-yard box, to be quite honest. Same with the players playing tonight, Trevor. Yeah. You have to say, Rosenthal, Loudrup, Gascoigne, and Tern all back. You have to say, you know, that's a very attacking side. Mm. There's someone like Negri, who basically lives in instinct, is going to thrive in that service, and he's proved it time again with the five and two games against Kamarnock so far. Yeah. Patrick in the game here at Ibrox to add to the two he got in the first game at Rugby Park. It was Perini who interrupted the flow there. He eventually gets in the end, gets himself, Judy wins a penalty for him. But they were in control, that was at the Rugby Park game and this match and uh, to be fair the Rugby Park match was fairly even for an hour that night and Walter Smith spoke to me after it and did say the same. But they grind out results at times and it's mainly down to this guy's goals that gets you three points. Well on that form it doesn't look too good for Kilmarnock tonight. No wonder Rangers are hot favourites. 6-4 to four on away from home. Kilmarnock 7-2 to two, and the draw 12-5. to five. We don't think a draw is going to be very good for Rangers tonight though. First goal scorer, guess who? Negri, 35 so far this season. He's 7 to 2 to add to that tally tonight. Rosenthal in the side and in at 6 to 1 in the betting. Laudrup's only got four so far this season for Rangers. Paul Wright is Kilmarnock's leading scorer, but he hasn't found the net in the last five games. Other potential scorers tonight. Gascoigne 12 to 1 back in the Rangers starting lineup. Pat Nevin. Back in the Kilmarnock side tonight after a broken jaw. McGowan yet to score for Kilmarnock this season. 66 to 1, the outsider. And our commentary team tonight at Rugby Park, Alan McAnally and first Rob Hawthorne. And with uh, Celtic and Hearts having home games tomorrow, they'll be just uh, praying from the sidelines tonight for a Rangers slip up. Do you think that's possible, Alan? Well, I mean, they've been pretty unconvincing, Rob, to be quite honest with you. And Kilmarnock's home form has been good. They've had some great results here. Granted, uh, the problem for Kilmarnock have, actually, is the, the fact that Rosenthal and Negri's back in the team. Gascoigne starts against. So it's going to be hard for them. And the bottom line is, Rangers have to win tonight to keep the pressure on Celtic tomorrow night. But, as, as, you, as you heard Charlie, talk, uh, Charlie talking in the studio earlier on, for the couple of games that they've played so far, Kilmarnock made it very difficult for Rangers for a good hour. And Rangers will have to grind out the same kind of result tonight. Well, let's take a look at the two teams turned out by the managers for tonight's game. And after the four goals conceded to Celtics, Harold Bratt back on Saturday, Kilmarnock opt for the experience of Ray Montgomery in defence. He led them to their Scottish Cup triumph in May. He's one of eight members of the side to figure in the Cup success who starts again tonight. Montgomery's return is because young, young Jim Lachlan has flu, while Pat Nevin comes back earlier than expected from the broken jaw that he sustained in training. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're obviously going to look to Nevin to give them something down that right-hand side, aren't they? And Paul Wright hasn't been scoring goals of late. They'll look for a little more from him with his partnership with McIntyre again. And it's very important that the, the experience of McPherson, McGowan, Montgomery and Baker try and hold Rangers out at the back. Rangers are without Alex Clellan, suspended after his sending off in the weekend defeat of Hibernian, and George Alberts, who scored the late winner despite getting an ankle injury earlier in the game. There's no Ian Ferguson, no jury in the starting 11, but there are places for Craig Moore, Jonas Stern, Paul Gascoigne, and Sebastian Rosenthal after his cruciate ligament injury. 
Well, this is a major attacking formation, really, by Rangers. They're, you know, they're playing with the three out front guys. Lauder obviously uh, making chances for Negan Rosenthal. And I think Jonas Tern, he'll be have a major holding role in midfield, allowing Ferguson and Gascoigne to support the front two. And, uh, you know, the experience of Goff at the back and uh, Gorham, although he's been a mainstay for the back, really, for Rangers, he's been superb. Uh, quite honestly, I don't really think he's going to have a great deal to do in goals tonight, Andy Gorham. Rangers fans having a lot more worrying to do than normal. They would expect their team to have a little bit of clear blue water between them and the rest by this stage of the season, but it hasn't happened in this campaign, and it's their away form this season that might give them a little bit of cause to be unsettled coming here tonight because all of the three defeats that they have suffered in the league have been away from Ibrox, but they do have two victories over Kilmarnock under their belts already this season. One of them here at Rugby Park. In fact, Rangers' last away defeat against Kilmarnock was back in May 1994, and at the time that was their third away defeat on the trot. Had they not won at Hibs at the weekend, we'd have been looking at a possible fourth consecutive away defeat for Rangers, but that late goal has just settled the nerves, and I think the reaction of the players at the end of the game told a lot of the story. They were hugely relieved to pick up maximum points from that match, Alan. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and, and, and they were very fortunate, uh, as I said earlier on there, if it hadn't been for Andy Gorham being superb in, in goal, it could have been you know, a major difference, but nevertheless, uh, he's not playing tonight, having said that, the, the man that scored the winner for them on Saturday, George, George Alberts, but the, the, the good thing for Rangers is, if, if anything, then they have the likes of Gascoigne back. Big plus at the Rosenthal back. I think they're, you know, with, with, with signing someone for four, four million pounds or whatever, you know, and they can't get him to deliver because he was injured. I think there's a bit of pressure on him to start, you know, putting the goods on right away for Rangers. And by the, the you know, they really need it because Negri's been carrying the team with the goals he's been scoring himself. But then he's back in. You're right, the away form hasn't been good, but uh, good place to start here. It's not an easy come to play. Superb stadium here, and as I said, Kilmarnock's home form has been well, you know, well documented. They're, you know, they've done really well at home, but it's all about this mob tonight. If they want to stay top of the league, they've got to win tonight. Well, out come these Rangers players who are bearing the hopes of supporters looking for that 10th league success in a row and to give Walter Smith a rousing send-off. Tonight is his 50th birthday and these are the players who threaten to upset the party. Kilmarnock's players, as Alan emphasised, have had a great home run. They've got some tremendous backing here at Rugby Park and there'll be one or two of them determined to do a favour to Celtic and Hearts in the chasing pack. What a big night it is for Sebastian Rosenthal. A goal on his debut in that cup tie against St Johnston, followed by the serious ligament injury that's kept him out until recently. His substitute appearance at the weekend after his comeback for the B team for Chile in the international against England at the Hawthorns. But tonight hoping to make a big impact after his big money signing. And on the other side, a great favourite of the home supporters, Paul Wright, a consistent goal scorer, 12 to his credit already this season, and at 30 years of age, just signed up on a new long-term deal, as Kilmarnock have been attempting to do with one or two of the favourite players in their ranks. Paul Gascoigne hasn't been a regular starter for Rangers, but if he's got his good head on, there's no telling what might happen, is there? Well, he's the man that makes them tick, isn't he? And I think they honestly have missed him in midfield. Certainly won't hurt them tonight, having uh, Stuart McCall out. Stuart it's actually come on on Saturday, injured the top of his leg, and he's been out. It's only the first injury he's picked up after uh, making his comeback after being out for a long time. But the bottom line, I think if Gascoigne's on song, and I think he'll be looking to get on the ball as often as he can, uh, then, uh, you know, you can imagine he can do the business. But I, I will emphasise that Kilmarnock have done well in games against Rangers and frustrated them for long periods of the game. And as we know in football, the longer it goes, the more difficult it can, it can become. The pressure is on Rangers to get result tonight. Simple as that. The worry for a lot of Rangers fans must be if one or two within their ranks are getting a bit demod happy. Not only Walter Smith's resignation at the end of the season well known, but Brian Laudrup. Also, having signed that pre-contract agreement with Chelsea, which will see him on his way to Stamford Bridge in the summer at the latest. Tonight's match referee is Bobby Orr. And it'll be the visitors to get the game underway. Marco Negri, what a remarkable goal-scoring record he's got this season. 
far and away the leading scorer in Scotland with 35. And he and Paul Gascoigne to get the match underway. Three teams then locked together at the top of the table on 52 points. Can Rangers give themselves a little bit of breathing space before those home games tomorrow for Celtic against Dunfermline and for Hearts against Aberdeen. Rangers do, of course, have that a game against Hearts to look forward to at the weekend. They've got a throw in and Craig Moore is the man to take it. Here's Loudrup involved in the action early on. Challenged by Holt and Paul Wright far and away offside. He likes to try and do that, Paul Wright, Rob. He, he, he tries to cheat a little bit to get on the other side of the defenders. You can see he's a little bit unlucky. You can see he's away already. I tell you, Bjorklund was sleeping there. If that had been a bit closer and Paul Wright was through, it would have been a goal, I would imagine. Kilmarnock haven't had too much success against the Rangers of late, but the last time that they did beat them, Paul Wright was on the score sheet. That was at Ibrox, and Paul Smith, uh, Walter Smith, the uh, Rangers manager, hoping that nothing like that happens today to spoil his birthday, 50 today. McGowan with a free kick. And here's Gascoigne, Richard Goff, given away by him to Holt. And an early stop. Andy Gorham tested early on. A good strike. He takes a bad ball, really given away by Richard Goff there, quite uncharacteristically. Drops beautiful, great strike there by Andy Gorham in the right place. We do well to beat from Andy Flynn. You can see here, it's a good ball through. Good strike by McIntyre. So McIntyre has had his problems with injury of late and has just forced his way back into the reckoning, which means now a place on the bench for Mark Roberts. Here's Negri. Unlucky break for him. Came up and hit him in the face. And as we've heard, he's a bit sensitive with uh, facial injuries at the moment after the uh, blow in the eye he took with a squash ball that kept him out for a while. But he's got the ball on here, and it's Brian Lauder tearing through! But unable to finish. You've got to say, for Brian Lauder in that position, it's a bad miss, Rob. I think Negri here is maybe trying to hold it up. Montgomery bundles into him. Good play by the referee, you've got to say. He's played advantage, and Brian really should be hitting the target from there. And, you know, a man of his class, really, that's a bad, bad miss when you don't let the goalkeeper do his job. Ladrup has got four goals so far this season. All of them have come in league action. McIntyre here putting more pressure on Goff. And giving away a free kick that's hotly disputed. Bjorklund. And Andy Gorham, who was the first of the two goalkeepers to be tested by that McIntyre effort. Headed away by Baker. Martin Baker again, and Wright again playing on the shoulder, and not so far offside this time. Yeah, that was very, very close. Very close indeed. Again, you see Paul Wright, he knows the ball's going to go in there. He, maybe from the picture you think maybe he's just a little bit offside. Possibly Goff playing along on the far side, but Paul Wright, Billy, he will look to get in behind all the time. And sometimes strikers do have to try and, you know, gain that half yard. He's certainly not the quickest Paul Wright, but a couple of times there he's been very close. And here's Ladrup, who's already gone to the other end and produced one shot that he will have been disappointed with because he didn't test the goalkeeper but he's threading away through again turn just unable to deliver the killer ball and it's Nevin here who set McIntyre away Goff is back there though been defended by the big man used the experience here got his body in front of the ball gave Jim McIntyre no chance of winning that one Down. Kilmarnock leading the chasing pack behind the top three, but a good 19 points distant. And Gascoigne here to try and unsettle them with one of his specials. 
decided to try and play it in though. Right, here's Riley. Riley, who's weighed in with one or two invaluable goals from the midfield area this season for Kilmarnock. Holt. He's taken it away from Gascoigne well. Right. This is Nevin. McPherson has moved on ahead of him. He's out to the right, but he slipped it through instead to Paul Wright. McPherson's cross. Crucially cleared by Goff. Here's Riley. Paul Wright. Trying to deliver. Nevin, plenty to his left, but he can't get it through. Bjorklin stops him. Corner to Kilmarnock. Encouraging start. Yeah, it's a great bit of football from Kilmarnock. First time, really, uh, Pat Nevin's been involved down this right-hand side. Started the move, a couple of good passes, getting the ball out wide again. Nevin gets the corner. Cleared to Rosenthal. The defending from Ray Montgomery, who's been out of the side for the last seven matches. Longest serving player now in his testimonial season at Rugby Park. Bobby Williamson, the Kilmarnock manager, former Rangers player. Always a special occasion for him, reunited with his old club. Here's Holt. This is John Henry. Nevin. And some good football from Kilmarnock in the opening exchanges. Gus McPherson, who was once on Rangers books but never made a senior appearance for them. Holt. Riley. Number two again, Gus McPherson. This is Nevin. Lovely layoff. Paul Wright, and it took a deflection off golf. Corner. It's good into playing. Good reaction from Paul Wright there as well, though. Rangers managed to defend it well, but a good ball in here. By G a little lucky, possibly, by Gus in here. Good control by Pot Nevin. Well aware who writes behind him. Unlucky. And Riley's latest corner. Holt meets it with a header. He doesn't score many goals. It's not a bad ball in at all. And you've got to see when he sees it again, he'll be disappointed he never managed to get it on target. At least doesn't score a goal, the goals, Gary Holt, but certainly have a chance there. And when he does score, they tend to be vital ones. Holt, the man who got the goal that basically preserved Kilmarnock's Premier Division status last season when he scored against Aberdeen. Negri here up against Montgomery. Marco Negri, who scored four times in the previous two meetings with Kilmarnock this season. A challenge by Holt. Here's Bjorklund. Barry Ferguson. Rosenthal. This is Moore. Jonas Turn. Perini. Gascoigne. Just noticed Gascoigne there, Paul. He's feeling a little bit. He seems to be thinking maybe hurt his knee, maybe his calf. He certainly was humpling a little bit there and he was quite quick to get the ball away there. Well, he's been on the bench for the last couple of matches as Paul Gascoigne in the starting lineup tonight. This is great skill from Laudrup. Cleared by Montgomery, who made sure that he was in front of Negri. Perini, Rosenthal. Turn takes over. This is Ferguson. Negri. Montgomery sticking tight to him. Gascoigne here. Can he place one in? No, it's left to Jonas Turn. Shaping for the shot. Wasn't far away, was it? Good play by Rangers here. Very patient build up. Jonas Turn, who hasn't scored a lot of goals since he came to Rangers. You can see here, I still see Gascoigne struggling. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes off. It's not like him to give the ball away so easy. Good movement by Turn there. My goodness, was he close. Almost there. Good movement by him there. Trying to turn and bend it in. It wasn't far away, was it? Another player who's only just back after injury. He's missed the last uh, five with a 
back problem has uh, turned, but the injury problem that's of more immediate attention here for Rangers is Gascoigne, who's not moving too cleverly at all. Rosenthal. Question really of how much longer they can give Gascoigne to run off the problem that he appears to have collected. Loudrup. Ferguson. Rangers throw. All three league defeats have been suffered by Rangers on their travels. Dundee United, Celtic and St Johnston, the teams to beat them in the league. Ferguson here looking for Negri. Shapes up with his back to goal and manages to turn. But uh, Kevin McGowan giving him no room for the shot. This is Baker bringing it clear for Kilmarnock. McIntyre got going in behind. Richard saying no to the referee, but it was an absolute stonewall foul. He just bundled him from the back there. So it's a good play by McIntyre. Showing close, use your body. If they're going to fund you over like that, we'll take a foul any day. Casco. Ferguson. This is Moore. Gascoigne looking to release Loudrop, it's a slide rule ball, but Ray Montgomery had judged it so well. A superb pass from, uh, from Gascoigne, there really was. He's given this injury every time to get it OK, but it's a superb pass, and it's only, my goodness, so close. Good, good defending by Kamala. Headed out by McGowan for the throw-in, but you can see why they want to give Gascoigne as long as possible to run off the injury when he provides piercing passes like that. It's Laudrup's cross, it's too deep for Negri. Across comes Jonas' turn, Negri still waiting at the edge of the six-yard box. Turns. Expect better from an international there, Rob. You know, he's showed good initiative, got onto the ball quick, but you know, a very, very bad cross. Not often you see Laudrup play the ball as deep as that. No one there this time for Rangers. Turn gets onto it in a flash, but that's a bad cross. Just a little bit on gas going there, Rob. He's obviously said to the to the bench there to Walter Smith and Archie Knox that he is OK Walter's come down into the dugout now so he's uh, obviously their fears are, are unfounded a bit of pulling by McGowan uh, by uh, Riley rather falling down Ferguson well, that's something that the commander midfield work on very, very hard. Holt, Henry and Riley not giving your midfield, any ch uh, your, your op opposition, any chance at all. No space and they're on him in a flash. Matt Riley's been a, a mainstay for Kilmarnock this season so far. That's for his free kick going straight to uh, Gordon Marshall. And Björklund, oh, total confusion! What a catastrophe! And Wright says thank you very much! between themselves but it was a complete calamity from Marshall clearance and Paul Wright profits fully what an incredible mix up I'll tell you it's a good thing from Gordon Marshall early touch straight down the thing Bjorklund's not even looking where Gordon coming Gordon coming to get the ball and Paul Wright well he's been out of sorts lately but he knew exactly what was happening there you can see Bjorklund's not even looking where Gordon is Paul Wright says thank you very much I'll take that, 1-0. I've got to say it was a great early ball from Gordon Marshall, putting the Rangers under pressure. And mistakes like that, as a striker, I used to love that. Well, Paul Wright, the beneficiary there of a very uncharacteristic lapse. Gordon was clearly calling to Bjorklund, but he didn't heed the warning. And he was furious. I don't think Andy Swedish is up too much, obviously. <laughs> but it was a terrible mistake, it really was. You can only presume that Andy has been shouting because Andy's going towards it. And Bjorkland didn't hear him because Bjorkland certainly wasn't looking where Andy Gorham was. Well, it's a route one goal that they're behind to, so Rangers will hope to conjure something from this. Gascoigne in attendance. Would look to be the favourite, but Rosenthal's there as well and takes it. 
and it comes off the wall. What a great free kick. They were bent around the wall. The wall does their job. They're not standing there for nothing. They don't want the ball to get to the goalkeeper, but it wasn't a good free kick. And the corner kick is taken to Turn, who hasn't been picked up at all. But his attempt is blocked by Holt. Rangers phased by the goal and the manner in which it's been conceded and desperate to strike back quickly. Paul Wright has really given them plenty to think about. Here towards Wright again, but this time it falls kindly for Bjorklund. Laudrup just trying to time his run there against Baker. And it's the defender who gets to it. He's going to have his hands filled tonight, Baker, if Laudrup says on that side, but he did well there. Gascoigne. Crosses straight into Marshall's hands. Gordon Marshall, who takes a huge slice of credit for the goal and played a big part in it with his assist. He'll be happy with that take as well. Remember, Kamalika coming off a 4 0 drubbing on Saturday, Robin. You know, they take the lead against the other old firm rivals, and uh, that could set them down a little bit as well as Gordon Marshall. Another <laughs> pull down by Montgomery. And it looks as though Montgomery, who already had a warning for a previous offence, gets booked. Well, they certainly got a grip of him there, hasn't they? I mean, uh, he'll obviously claim his innocence. It may be a little harsh, because I don't think he's had many too bad tackles, Ray Montgomery. But uh, I suppose if you're going to grab Brian Loudrop like that, then the referee's going to take it as a booking, and that's exactly what's happened. Well, Montgomery's defensive partner... Kevin McGowan was sent off against Rangers at Ibrox in November and Montgomery's the player under pressure now with a yellow card to his name. Slipped through here by turn. And Gary Holt doing so well there. Showing great strength against Rosenthal. Yeah, I said that earlier on in the midfield. They work so hard, they don't give you any space. And it's exactly what he did there, Gary Holt. Running back, checking for the run for Rosenthal. And they're going to have to do that a lot, Kilmarnock, because they know most of the time it's going to be Rangers' possession, if that's going to be the case. But certainly Kilmarnock have, start, have no, they've started well. Started the way they've played Rangers every time so far, except this time they've got a little bit of luck. And Paul Wright's putting them one up and up. Take it. Here's Gascoigne. Perini. Rosenthal. Gascoigne. Cleared by Montgomery. Right, the goal scorer picking out McIntyre. Turn. And the back by McGowan. Marshall not too sure. A bit of uncertainty there between he and Montgomery, but he sorted it out adequately. Goff. Rosenthal. Baker. Nevin. This is Gascoigne. He could have set Rosenthal away again. Steading influence at the back, Montgomery, but he will have to watch his step a little carefully now after that early caution. But it's Rangers at the moment who are really under pressure that uh, goal that's been scored by Paul Wright and more worryingly for Rangers the way they conceded it well it's a quite unbelievable goal every time you see it it gets worse and worse for Rangers doesn't it Bjorklund not looking where Andy Gorham is 
Andy surely must have been shouting because he's the ones that's facing it. And Paul Wright let them go on with it. Nipped in and said, thanks very much. Well, just like the one that Peter Schmeichel conceded recently, it's a goal that uh, Andy Gorham won't care to uh, look back on too often. But it's a goal that the way things stand at the moment has uh, given a little bit of hope to Celtic and Hearts in the slipstream of Rangers. And here goes Moore. Montgomery. Paul Wright. McIntyre, good first time ball for Holt to chase on to. And Rangers grateful that Gorham was very alert and aware of the danger. Good play by Paul right there, he instructed things well. Good early ball in, a little bit too close to the goalkeeper, but the idea was right. Rangers has been very, very unsteady at the back completely so far in this game. Whereas Kamara, I think, have policed the likes of Negri, Loudrop and Rosenthal quite well so far. Worrying times these for Rangers, although they have had the majority of the possession, they've been unable to do anything with it shot from a turn that wasn't very far away, perhaps the best effort they've had in the game so far, although Laudrup did have a, a good chance before that. But uh, some of Kilmarnock's football has been steady and assured, and they've always looked to threaten this situation with McIntyre. Nevin unable to control. He's obviously given Pat Nevin, Bobby Williamson there, given Pat Nevin the licence to go from left to right to, to pick his side, Pat over on the left-hand side, but certainly took his eye off the ball there. Baker. Nevin. Not the start that he wanted to his uh, birthday match, Walter Smith. Great servant of uh, Rangers. And due a testimonial himself a week tonight, in fact, against uh, Liverpool. Right. Here's Henry. Riley. Challenge was by Goff. And in goes Laudrup. There's plenty of steel in that challenge from Goff, which is left Paul Wright grounded. The referee thought it was a perfectly fair and legal challenge, and it's Rangers breaking with it, and Jonas turn. Back to turn from Montgomery. Cleared by Riley, only to the Swede again there. Now Laudrup. Perini's made a run into the area for him. The challenge by McGowan. He's had a good solid first 25 minutes. Big McGowan at the back there. He's done really well. Anything asked of him, he's been equal to it so far. Paul Gascoigne. Fouled by Bjorklund. Jim McIntyre, the player offended against. The first. McIntyre. All right, the only Kilmarnock player in the box. It's daft by Jim McIntyre there. Bjorn has not had a good 25 minutes on the other hand talking about McGowan. And really, you could be looking for him to just keep him under pressure there. Don't foul him and try and make him make a mistake. Instead of that, all you do is give Rangers back possession. Or a man, Bjorklin, desperate for something to happen at the other end so that their memory of the catastrophic goal they've conceded might uh, just fade into the distance. Ferguson had made a good run from the midfield, and Gascoigne here could try and pick him out, but it's just too long for him. Gascoigne trying to do what uh, Turn had failed to, because he was crowded out. Right idea, but just too long. Gascoigne again. Brian Laudrup. 
Now Perini's made a move ahead of him. Great football, he's found him! But he can't find the net. Exquisite play from Brian Lowe. It's probably the wrong man, Perini, to find in that sort of situation. What defenders don't like, driving into him. A great run for Perini, got to be said. He just had the lead boots there on and crossed it to way to nobody at the back post. Might even know him better having a shot there. But really, he had the diving boots on there to cross that over. But a great move from Rangers. Sergio Perini actually scored against Kilmarnock in the 4-1 victory back in November. Too short for Perini that time, it was the person who cut it out. And it's Perini with the throw-in. Richard Goff. Here's Rosenthal. Aiming to find Negri, he's offside. Well, we know he's going to try and get free in the box there. I don't know if it's, uh, it's definitely offside there, it's the right decision. But we know he loves to score goals and get in the box there, and that's the only time Kamalaka are really going to have to be careful in there. Scored from a similar position on Saturday from a loud up cross, and he'll look to get in there all night. Well, plenty of those offsides for uh, Kilmarnock have seen Paul Wright in an advanced position, but he was certainly in the right place at the right time to benefit from a complete breakdown in communication between Bjorklund and Andy Gorham that's led to Kilmarnock's goal. It did seem to be a call and a fairly strong one at that from Gorham, but uh, Bjorklund proceeded with his action. Paid a heavy penalty and it all stemmed from this man's clearance. McIntyre. <laughs> and cheers there for Bjorklund as he does reach his goalkeeper. a very positive Rangers lineup from the start and they've switched Rosenthal and Laudrup over to try and add a bit of variety to their play. But so far still unable to find the opening to cancel out that Kilmarnock goal. This is Laudrup, Jonas Turn, Gascoigne, Laudrup. It's fallen to Rosenthal, and he's slipped Laudrup through, chance for the equaliser, and Marshall denies him at point-blank range. Good play by Rangers again, though, and managed to get through, possibly a little bit of luck here as the ball sticks there. But good pass from Rosenthal through to Laudrup, again in this position, you'd expect him to score. Got to say, Marshall does really well there. Laudrup's corner this time, headed away by McIntyre. Turn. Rosenthal. Holt. This is Gascoigne. Ferguson. Moore. To Goff. Losing out to Nevin. And slipped through by Henry. Yerkel in the covering player. Perini. Gascoigne. Rosenthal wide of Perini to his left. The two men of uh, two wide men have switched again. His turn to play that one through Negri, it's straight offside.
Cup. And McIntyre had timed his run well that time, he's onside. And that's left Moore with the retrieval job to do. And McIntyre, just when he seems set to get through, goes down, but no free kick given against Moore. Can't believe that, looked as if Moore's really chopped him down there. The first challenge is okay with the shoulder. You see here, the first challenge is okay there, because McIntyre's expecting it. Jim managed to keep it there, but well, that's a foul for me. And it was a very, very promising position that for Kilmarnock. McIntyre looked through. He'd shown great awareness anyway. He'd stayed in an offside position to move on to it. Used his strength to get away from Moore in the first place. And can feel hard done by that he didn't get the free kick. Loudra. John Henry. That was McPherson, and this time it's Holt who sprung from the midfield and is onside and has won the corner off Fjordland. Done well, Gary Holt there. He's broke from midfield. It's a hard run to do for a midfield player, but you've got to make it into the corner ball and make it a good ball. He did that and played the ball off of Bjorkland for a corner. Ever since uh, Ladra produced that save from Gordon Marshall, Kilmarnock have really shaken up their ideas. They're not resting on that 1 0 lead. They're sensing perhaps that Rangers could be vulnerable to concede another as Riley's corner is planted in. And they're flying in. It's Nevin going for it. Well cleared by Ferguson. Montgomery, Riley, McPherson. It's Mark Riley again. Holt. Throw into Kilmarnock and Gus McPherson has come forward to take it. Another player who's recently signed a new contract, a three-year deal in his case. And he gets this one across. There's a little push there from McIntyre on Goff. Reminder of action coming up for you here on Sky Sports. Barnsley against Manchester United in our FA Cup special. That's Wednesday at 7.30 on Sky Sports 2. And with the uh, replay coming up in that match, memories of the uh, goal that Peter Schmeichel conceded to John Hendry in the first match. Not exactly echoes of that with uh, Bjorklund and Andy Gorham, but still a horrible moment for both players concerned tonight Goff Baker well chested down by McIntyre Björklund tidying up and Rosenthal just finding a little bit of space Negri making a move to the left for him and he's found him Montgomery's attentions forced him to take the chance early well, he's made the run, making sure Rosenthal knows exactly where he's going. He's, he's sprinting away, trying to get a yard. Half gets it. It's a hard, it's a hard chance. It's a half chance, possibly, but it's it been a, a tremendous finish and they got it. But nevertheless, you know just how dangerous Negri is. And good, good play by Montgomery there, just making sure he didn't have a free shot and goal. Well, Rangers will keep battering away. And they already have managed more attempts at the moment, but uh, not too many on target for them at the moment. But Negri's two goals in the meeting of the sides at Ibrox in November came in the last three minutes of that encounter. Indeed, the score was one all going into the last five minutes of the match. So Kilmarnock will be taking nothing for granted here. Brian Laudrup. He's looking for Ferguson. Cleared by Baker's header. And this is Nevitt. Gascoigne. Rosenthal. Cleared by Montgomery after it had taken an unfortunate uh, deflection off Henry. Baker.
Rangers, remember, have won 12 of their last 14 league meetings with Kilmarnock. And they're unbeaten in their last seven visits to Rugby Park. But uh, defeat here against Bobby Williamson's men tonight would be very costly for Rangers. Walter Smith is already contemplating a change here and Gordon Dury, who did start at the weekend, is going to come on now and it's Paul Gascoigne that he's taking the place of. Oh, we, we, we spotted earlier on Gascoigne was struggling, Rob. And it's been noticeable over the last 10-15 minutes where at no time has Paul Gascoigne done what he normally does is get the ball and drive into the defence to try and support the, the front players. That hasn't happened at all and they've got Gordon Jury on. Gordon actually spoke to him before the game, wasn't that happy to be dropped here. He'll be happy to get a chance now and prove that Walter Smith shouldn't have dropped him in the first place. Jury getting a touch here for Loudrup. Cleared by McGowan. Brian Loudrup again. Here's his turn. This is Moore. Ferguson. Nevin could afford to leave it, more unable to uh, connect. Well, there's the uh, problem that has afflicted Paul Gascoigne. It's a disappointing comeback for him, and he really does appear to be inconsolable. Yeah, it doesn't... It's certainly the, the muscle below the calf, between the calf and the, the Achilles at the bottom, it'll just be a, a real niggling injury, difficult to get away, because every step you take, the muscle works and that's the problem and they'll ice that probably right away and hopefully it certainly doesn't need an x-ray and it's just a, a muscle problem which means it still means a, a couple of weeks to you know, two to three weeks anyway Gascoigne did sign a new three-year contract but still speculation abounds about his future and every time that injuries flare up the question of whether he'll be fit to go to France in 1998 rears its head and on the day that Robbie Fowler's uh, position in the squad was put in jeopardy by his injury it's uh, not a pleasant sight for Glenn Hoddle to see Gascoigne going up with a recurrence of an injury problem offside here against McIntyre again see actually Jim's trying to get back on side there it's a super ball through but correct result he's definitely offside there Jim McIntyre is a player who's been badly affected by injuries this season. He's only recently back after six months out with a serious knee problem. Here's McCown. Perini into the back of Paul Wright, who emerges unscathed to try and put McIntyre in the clear. But it's Bjorklund tidying up this time. Richard Gott. who answered Walter Smith's SOS to return after his uh, spell in the United States but he is in California bound again next season but is he going to get the opportunity having been a mainstay of the previous nine title campaigns to win a tenth in succession injury here for Ferguson I said they wouldn't give them a minute in midfield and that's exactly what's happening John Henry coming in and Barry Ferguson there Barry young player even by Walter Smith saying you know he's played in a few games maybe even he thought that Barry wouldn't play and he'll certainly play a big part in Rangers future you'd think Goff Henry getting back time when they have been buying big and buying largely from the continent though it's uh, good to see a product of the youth system in the team in the form of this man Ferguson Nevin Ferguson battling hard again to try and set Loudrup away tidied up by Montgomery who's already shown how crucial his experience can be Moore has come forward for the throw in here. Loudrup beaten off the ball. This is Nevin. Henry. 
Montgomery under pressure from Jury. And given away by Bjorklin this time to Wright. McIntyre. Tidied up by Ferguson. Moore. And able to escape the lunging challenge of Jim McIntyre, who may just have tested the referee's patience a little too much. He certainly caught me. It's good play by Craig Moore then. Showing a little bit of the ball. Good turn. I don't think he'll get booked. I think it'll just be a ticking off. Jim hasn't had too many heavy tackles in the game but he certainly caught Craig Moore there I think if he does it again he'll find his way into the book Gordon Dury Gordon Dury here powering down the left hand side he's looking to get into the Scotland team of course and very difficult for him to get into the starting lineup all the time because of the big stars Rangers have but it's an opportunity for him tonight as I said earlier on to prove to Wallace Smith that he's worth a place in the team here's Ladrup Goff Bjorklund there's Perini Dury Bjorklund he's carried that on too far it's not been a happy night at all for Bjorklund so far this is Nevin losing out for Ferguson this is Brian Laudrup Negri letting it go, Jury retrieving for Rosenthal. Negri furious, he wanted the ball played into him. Yeah, he got a couple of yards, Negri actually, he's always looking to ghost in behind defenders. It's really not happening for Rangers just now, I've got to say the middle two, you've got to say the, the back four for Commander, they're policing everything really well, and that's a bit of hit and hope really from Rosenthal. That's not going to you know, trouble Gordon Master's goal at all, got, Rangers are going to be looking for a lot more than that from him. It's worth saying that if the score stays this way, then Rangers would be knocked off the top of the table tonight. Because a Celtic's goal difference would be better. Both of them came into it with a plus 30 goal difference. The Rangers have now conceded their 28th goal of the season in league football. And now need to get back into this game to maintain their position at the head of the table. Jonas turned with the free kick, and Richard Goff had gone forward for it. That was Ferguson, and Montgomery in confusion, and Goff winning the corner. Well, it's the first time this, you know, the two in defence have been, been so, superb so far. First time really tonight. They'll let one another deal with it. Thankfully, they managed to get the block in from Richard Goff's shot. Corner played back to Rosenthal. Here's Goff. Now by Jury. Well, we know he's a fierce competitor with Gordon Jury. A little bit over the top there, it's a dangerous tackle. But Gordon knows that he's got to get on the ball and got to make things happen for Rangers because right now Bobby Williamson's going to be really pleased with the way the team's played in the first half. And all the problems are with Walter Smith and he'll have to make, and there's a few changes, but certainly a few words because Rangers, as I said before, have been unconvincing last week and again, Rob, tonight in the first 45 minutes they've been very unconvincing. Right here going into challenge Gorham again.
Foul by Riley. And free kick taken well out of position. Here's Tan. Rosenthal. Goff has stayed in the attack with Jury and Negri. It is Richard Goff. Carini. Negri just getting back on side at the right moment. And looked very theatrically at the referee there for a penalty and maybe did his cause no good at all. No, I, I don't think... I, it, it, OK, let's call it a little one up ship, but he's not going to get a penalty for that. Loudrup. And headed behind by Baker for the corner. Just back on Negri there very quickly, Rob. I think it, the, the space he had actually been better actually concentrating, get the ball down and under control and having a swivel shot on goal. Instead of that, looking for the penalty has brought Rangers nothing at all. Ferguson's corner. And there goes the half-time whistle in a very disappointing first half for Rangers, after which there'll be plenty of inquests. Paul White benefiting from a defensive mistake, a complete breakdown in communication between Björklund and Andy Gorham, who appeared to be calling to his defender as Gordon Marshall's launch clearance went down the other end. Gorham came for it, Björklund didn't see him, didn't hear him. Total catastrophe, and Paul Wright was the beneficiary to give Kilmarnock a half-time lead and leave some very anguished players. That anguish will undoubtedly spill over in the Rangers dressing room at half-time, where the scoreline is Kilmarnock 1, Rangers 0. Here tonight is the title race in Scotland, Kilmarnock against Rangers from Rugby Park. And what a story this game is turning into. Kilmarnock in front and Rangers in trouble. Rangers have won four corners to only three for the home side, but really not much penetration from Rangers as they look for a good win to take themselves clear on top again. One first half booking, Ray Montgomery for Kilmarnock. Squeeze into that middle third of the field and Rangers again, plenty of possession of the football, but where is the penetration for them? And just to remind you, if it stays like this, Celtic go back to the top ahead of their own game tomorrow night. Charlie Nicholas and Trevor Stephen with me. What's going wrong for Rangers? I just feel it's, um, it's been fairly uninspired and it's, uh, there's not been a great deal to shout about as far as uh, Walter Smith's concerned. He certainly won't be enjoying his 50th birthday this, after, uh, this evening. Rather, uh, Kilmarnock have been dogged, they've been determined, but an error has uh, allowed them to take the lead before half-time. You can't say that they don't deserve it. They've, they've worked hard and probably getting out of the game what they feel they deserve. And a big story, not just for Rangers, but again, maybe for England, Paul Gascoigne out of the game. Charlie, do you feel there was an early tackle which maybe caused the damage? I, I'm not sure quite if it was a, a heavy knock that he took, Paul, but I mean, it was in the first minute of the game. It was very early on, and I think Big Allen had called it when he says, he goes, he lunges in a little bit. He's, he's in there and he's trying to battle to win it. He's maybe just slightly overstretched and maybe just done a little muscle just below the calf. But uh, for me, after five minutes, you could see he just wasn't mobile at all. There's this little stretch coming in now. Lands in the outside his heel and I think that's agitated the muscle. And uh, it was, he was in trouble ever since that first minute. Trevor, just shades of... You remember the, the famous Gary Charles? Cup mm -hmm. final tackle, over-exuberance, another yeah. case of that from Gascoigne well, tonight? I think he was back in the team and he wanted to do well. And when that happened, I, th I took the wind right of his sails. And he's not, he, well, he, it was obvious he couldn't uh, perform as he wanted to perform. And I think Walter Smith had said, right, Jonas turn, Paul Gascoigne, you provide that ammunition, give the ball to Loudrop, and you've got Rosenthal and Negri in there to score the goals. And it just didn't work out like that. So no penetration from Rangers going forward, but how about defensively? <laughs> well, this is the Rangers side that we've seen in the last five or six weeks, which has been indecisive at the back. Um, Bjorklund and Gorham, he simply doesn't look Bjorklund, but I've got to say in his defence, I think he's in control of the situation. He's got the pace in Paul Wright. I don't think Andy Gorham needs to come out there. I think it's under control. But credit to the, the striker. He read the situation and he's grateful for it. Trevor? Mm, I just uh, Typical of, of really what's been... Uh, on display there, just a lack of uh, 
um, focus, a lack of, of, of togetherness. And Bjorklund, all right, he was, uh, he was under pressure, but he couldn't really afford to take his eye off the ball too Not much. Not the first time it's happened between them, is it? No, no that's right. It's been an incident before with, uh, with, between Andy Who's Gorham the, and... the high-angle uh, view of tonight's first up? Yeah, Andy, Andy had to make the decision there. And, uh, Here's the one against Dundee United. Yeah, again, it's a slip by Andy. This was the first one that I'd it's, ever seen Andy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Bjorklund run away there, Trev. I mean, he, he yeah. passes it back. Mm. He doesn't want to take any responsibility and just hides behind the striker. Mm. I mean, yeah. Andy, Andy gets the blame for it. But at the same time, the two of them should get it sorted out. They are going for a championship. Brian Loudrup, how much of a feature has he been tonight? Not a lot. I don't think he's done very much at all. Although he's had a couple of good opportunities. I would have to say you would have put your mortgage on this. At least maybe thinking about squaring it, but I thought he would have scored. He'd won early on in the first half, but we thought he might have done better also. Just a little maybe indecision again. And I, this, this is a, a team I look at tonight and feel the strain is now starting to tell on them. Well, they've had to come from behind a few times, haven't they? And maybe the strain is starting to tell on Rangers. They've got to get themselves up and get out there for the second half. If they lose here tonight, just to remind you, Celtic will be back to the top. It's also a great result for Hearts. Rangers in trouble here. And there has been a change made by Walter Smith at half-time. And Jürgen Björklund, who was involved in the mistake that led to the goal, has been taken off. And on in his place comes the Australian defender, Tony Vidmar, who's been out for the last few matches, but gets his chance in this second half, and clearly Bjorklund's spirit had been broken by the incident that led to the Paul Wright goal. Well, I, I think apart from the goal, I think his 45 minutes was quite atrocious for an international player. I know it's easy to have a bad night, but quite honestly, when you go for the championship, Rob, you just can't have bad nights, and probably it's the, I think Walter Smith is heading on safety here by hoping Vidmar's hungry enough to tighten defence up, and uh, let's see what happens then. They've actually lined up for the second half with Goff on the right, then Moore, then Perini and Vidmar starting on the left-hand side of the defence. We'll uh, wait and see if that's the way that it stays. This is Moore, and this is Turn. And now Vidmar gets his first touch for Rangers. Here is Turn, Dury, who was brought on in the first half for Gascoigne. And that could be the most crucial absence as far as Rangers are concerned. Unless Loudrup can prize Kilmarnock open here, it's fallen to Ferguson. Turn. And it's a slip past Marco Negri and gone for the goal kick. Well, what are Walter Smith's side going to do now that Gascoigne is off the field? They would have been looking for his probing passes to have an impact late on. But uh, the doctor is still examining Gascoigne at the moment and he may well have to go off later for an X-ray. I think he's certain to get an X-ray, Rob. I don't think they'll want to take a chance. It's in an area where, you know, fractures are liable. I don't think it was maybe as bad as that, but the muscle tear, nevertheless, I think you'll need to be, get an X-ray just to make sure. After tonight, ten games left for Rangers in the championship run-in and they've conceded a corner here. Craig Moore giving a ball that Andy Gorham was unable to keep in play. Well, he's not under any pressure, and it's quite simply bad defending. Not much Andy Gorham can do about that, I'm afraid. And just how costly is the edginess in front of Andy Gorham to be tonight? Unfortunately for them, they've picked up the threads of where they left off in the first half. And Kilmarnock have been very busy. And you'd never get bet against Paul Wright, adding to the one he scored already. Nevin with a corner. Three header away for Perini. That's McPherson. Look for McIntyre. But there's an injury to uh, Gordon Jury, and the referee has uh, called back attention for it. It looks like there was a clash here with Jury. And as a head injury, the referee had no alternative but to uh, stop play immediately. Yeah, he's quite right here. It's Gary Holt, I think, with Dury. And as Gordon's won the head, they'll certainly... The both of them have made head contact with each other. And that's what happens nowadays. You know, if it's such as bad as that, and the, the two of them are looking as if they're struggling, then he's only got one option, and that's to stop the game. We don't want anything bad to happen. I don't think the... Uh... Kilmarnock fans had actually spotted that there were two players involved and that uh, 
it might be a case of head injuries and were initially frustrated that uh, play had been stopped when they were in an attacking situation but it's clear that the referee had no alternative while they're being treated let's get an update now on Paul Gascoigne's problems and over to our reporter Davy Proven yeah, Paul Gascoigne at the moment, uh, Rob is in with the Rangers doctor, Dr. Cruikshank. He's examining the injury at the moment. The Rangers kit man, uh, Jim Bell, has just come down the tunnel and he tells me they're trying to arrange an x-ray for Paul Gascoigne. It may just be a precautionary measure, but it looks like an x-ray for Paul Gascoigne nevertheless. And as if that wasn't bad enough, just look at the problems that uh, Gordon Jury is encountering. There's blood coming from that head wound, as there was from Gary Holt too, and he has already been led off the field. And it may well be a case that both sides will have to be temporarily reduced to ten men, although in Rangers' case that's uh, particularly distressing, as Jury was the man who came on for Gascoigne in the first instance. You can see Gordon Jury's on looking at the ball, wins the head up. The head clash was almost inevitable there, but you can show the referee was absolutely right. You can see there's blood from both of the guys' heads, and we both need treatment immediately here. So it is down to 10 against 10. And while Jury is treated behind the goal, Paul Wright engaged in a, a very sporting act in that from the bounce up, after Kilmarnock, remember, had been in a very promising attacking situation, played it out for the goal kick. There's Vidmar. Linking up with Brian Laudra. The cross goes behind for the goal kick. Well, Jury didn't have need to go to the dressing room, unlike the other player in whom he was involved in that uh, clash, so he's now back on. You would imagine that uh, he would have felt a little groggy after that uh, clash of heads. <laughs> the monarch, remember, at the moment, still down to 10 men. Holt is the player off. Here's Perini. And Negri this time pulling away behind Montgomery, but he got to it. Laudrup. Vidmar placing it in. And Negri wisely left it for Rosenthal. Negri waiting at the edge of the six-yard box. Diori making a run for him. But Diori couldn't pull it back. You've got to say it's not particularly great play by Rosenthal here. De delays in the ball, a bit of good defending though it's got to be said and when Gordon makes the run really he's got no chance of getting that and that's actually a slight play by an international if you want to be you know, winning championships really your, your build up play has got to be better than that It's a Kilmarnock defence that has been leaking goals in the last couple of games but they're holding firm here against the potency of the Rangers attack Negri who's been so prolific hasn't really had a Sniff tonight. They haven't scored in their two games before tonight, Kilmarnock, but they let in six goals in losing their last two matches. And yet here they are protecting a 1-0 lead against the team that came into this match as leaders, but may well end it off the top. Celtic poised to go to the top of the table if things stay as they are. Carini here looking to hit Negri, but he's straight offside. And his frustration throughout the game has been mounting. We saw with his uh, penalty claim towards the end of the first half that. Yeah, he's definitely offside there, Street. Good ball in the right enough. It's got to be said that McGowan and Montgomery really have policed him well. And as you said, already Rob really hasn't had a sniff tonight. And, it, and things are becoming more and more frustrating for him. He's, he's going to try and steal that extra half yard. And, Thankfully for Kamalak, for suppose, there's anyway there, he was offside. Of the two goals that he scored late on in the meeting in November against Kilmarnock, one of Negri's was from the penalty spot. So he'll be looking to win any verdict he can from the uh, referee tonight. And now another 
problem for Gordon Jury, who's not had the happiest of nights since he came on for Paul Gascoigne. And it looks to be a recurrence of the problem that he suffered initially in that uh, clash with Gary Holt and Walter Smith is yeah, he's just watching anxiously. Yeah, he's just taking the sign from Richard Goff there. Richard gave the sign to make a substitute and that's what brought the stretches on right away and Walter Smith acknowledged that fact right away and I think they'll definitely make a change. You're going to see it here, Gordon. No, he's just struggling badly. Really struggling. Obviously that knock from before is just... He's presumably got double vision, Gordon, and really... If it's got it as bad as that, you can see it would need to be bad if Gordon Dewey is going to go down, and it obviously is, and we're going to see a change. Well, it was a brave, brave attempt by uh, Gordon Dewey to try and battle on, despite the severity of the initial injury. But he is going to be taken off now, and that has to be the uh, wisest course of action. The player who is going to come on to uh, take his place is Jonathan Johansson. Player from Finland who hasn't really had too many opportunities in the uh, Rangers first team. Every time that he has been used, it has been on the bench as a substitute. Gary Holt came back as well onto the touch line. Yeah, so... Holt is ready to bolster Kilmarnock's strength. They've been down to 10 men for a while now after the initial collision, but Holt is coming back on. This was the injury that caused the problem for both players. It really was a horrendous clash, and while Holt went away to the dressing room to be treated, Jury was taken behind the goal, and although the initial problem was sorted out, he clearly felt that he couldn't continue. And that really is a very sorry sight for Rangers. Johansson now to try and take his chance. Sorry for Gordon Judy as well. I already said that he was disappointed at not being included in the starting lineup tonight. And then all of a sudden got his opportunity to prove to Walter Smith that he may have been able to start the game. And when you see Gordon lying in the stretch like that, that's not good. It's also not good for you know the Scotland chances as well. We're looking for Gordon Jury to put a run of games in the Rangers team to give us match fitness to going into France and not only all Rangers fans, or football fans, but Craig Brown won't be particularly happy with that sight either. Well, Gordon Jury has always been a very wholehearted player and he uh, brought that great commitment onto the field when he was introduced in place of Paul Gascoigne. The loss of Gascoigne was a difficult one to bear, but. Uh, the loss of the uh, jury in these circumstances makes it all the more difficult for Rangers. And that is not a very happy sight at all. Here's uh, Baker with the throw. Paul White. Goff. Back to Andy Gore. You wonder about the effect that uh, that will have on the players anyway. It's a difficult enough job for them anyway, coming back into this game, but the sight of uh, Gordon Jury being taken away, as he has been, is bound to uh, play on the mind of one or two of his colleagues. I think the problem Rangers have, Rob, as well, is the fact that you know, we're, we're looking for some consistency of Rangers, and what they've had tonight is... Just... <laughs> Complete and utter turmoil. They haven't played the, the, you know, the same starting lineup. They've now made two force changes, and uh, they're a goal behind. So things are not looking good. Here's Goff. This is Ferguson. Good run from Ferguson. Montgomery. Beaten off the ball by Rosenthal. A free kick given to Kilmarnock. Considering Ray Montgomery hasn't played too often, he's had a good game tonight so far on the heart of that command defence. They've shown Ray Montgomery and Kevin McGowan that they're going to be very difficult to break down tonight. 
that's going to need the full repertoire of Laudrup skills and the finishing prowess of Marco Negri if they're to make something of this but again his frustration is evident he claims he's being held there by McGowan but it might just break here for the substitute Bidmar a great challenge last ditch challenge from Gary Holt what a super challenge that was off the park three stitches in his head and has really to bomb over to try and get it out of Bidmar I thought Bidmar was going to look, lift his head and play in Rosenthal at the back post didn't do that but what a great challenge from Gary Holt there well, Holt did actually hurt himself in making the challenge, but Budmar there thought he was going to make a dramatic entrance. You see here, he's missed it. Budmar Bolton, if he just lifts his head, he can play Rosenthal in. What a super challenge by Gary Holt. And unfortunately for him, actually, he's injured himself in the process, but a great tackle there. He really did put everything into it. At some cost to himself there. Holt, who's only just been back to the dressing room for treatment to the uh, head injury. And now the impact of that uh, challenge taking its toll. But uh, Vidmar, the man who really gave Kilmarnock such a scare, is also requiring further treatment. Because your boys on double time tonight, they seem never to be off the pitch this evening. Well, what all of this means, of course, is that there is going to be an agonising length of stoppage time to be added on at the end. And if it's uh, still 1-0, it could be a nervy closing few stages. If he just lifts his head there, they could have played Rosenthal, but it's a, not only is it a good tackle, but it's a clean tackle. And naturally important, with only Gordon Marshall to beat, Vidmar would have surely scored. The flick from right, this is Nevin. Yeah, this turn. Ball play back by McGowan to Marshall. Nevin offside. Got. Well, Negri let it go. And McGowan was there behind him to tidy up as he has done so often. And it's another Kilmarnock break. And it's McIntyre who'll have to do it on his own. Henry has joined the attack now. He tried to place it. Just left McIntyre with a little too much to do. Henry and Nevin were trying to battle forward, but just couldn't get forward quickly enough. And now Vidmar goes down, free kick. He's looked pretty lively since he came on, Vidmar. I must say, it's good driving in here. It's, you know, he's just been brought down by McGowan. There's loads of a great deal of touch. He's probably looking for the foul. Probably needs a breather after a hard 15, 20 minutes of just coming on at the start of the second half. But he certainly has at least looked a little livelier than Bjorkman did. Ferguson Rosenthal cleared by McGowan cleared away by Tony Bidmar I just gave him the kiss of death here didn't I <laughs> well, Bidmar certainly has given Kilmarnock plenty to think about though to Ferson and they've stayed on side he broke just at the right moment did John Henry and he's looking for Nevin and it away by Johansson it was a super run from John Henry he's definitely not offside he's come from deep as soon as the ball's laid back I said in the first half some of the midfield players you've got to take a chance and get into those corners get in behind your opposition and that's exactly what Kamala did there and it's a good job Johansson was there move in front on the corner count and McIntyre was going for it cleared by Goff to Nevin and McIntyre just couldn't direct his effort goalwards but again more panic in what has been a very uncertain Rangers defence when he sees this again he won't like it again it's not particularly great defending by Rangers it's only half cleared ball comes in oh my goodness what a great chance completely full space for him just never made contact he's already put the ball in the net unfortunately taking his eye off it and he doesn't make contact Rangers managed to clear the danger the Rangers defence looking as edgy as it possibly has throughout the 
rest of the previous campaign. There's Nevin. Foul by Craig Moore. And Gary Holt very much a man in the wars at the moment. Doesn't seem to be a great deal, but Gary's down again. I don't know if he's going to need any treatment. He's certainly staying down. That's possibly a reaction from the same injury he had when he made the super tackle on Tony Vidmar. Conceding the free kick, which uh, the person wanted to take quickly and wanted to take a little too quickly. The retake from Gus McPherson. And Wright, McIntyre and Nevin forward in a three-man front line here for Kilmarnock if they can pick any of them out. Cleared by Goff, but only to Paul Wright. has taken a bit of a downturn and it's not surprising really bearing in mind the sight of uh, Gordon Jury being wheeled away I think it may have had an effect on the players from both sides and we are hearing worrying news that uh, Gordon Jury is unconscious and has been taken to hospital under police escort and I think that's uh, really has taken the game down a notch. The players were aware of just how serious the problem was and are having difficulty picking up the threads of the game itself. And with their uh, concern for Gordon Jury, quite understandable, the game almost seemingly doesn't matter. It certainly seems a bit it's soothing Kilmarnock more at the moment because the game's very, very patchy and they're certainly quite comfortable at the moment, Rob, but I don't like to hear that about any player and let's hope he's OK. And as he goes to hospital, I know that he will carry with him the best wishes of both teams here. One of those occasions where all rivalry is laid to rest. It is a throw-in here to Rangers, and it's found Richard Goff. Jonas turn, and Marco Negri just straying into an offside position. He's done that a lot, hasn't he? He's becoming more and more frustrated. McGowan and Montgomery, who I think have been superb tonight in policing him. You can see that he's talking to himself. He's not happy. And he knows, really, he's got to get the goals. The Rangers are going to get themselves back in this game, Robin. Quite honestly, at the moment, it doesn't look like it. And they're, they're just every bit as convincing as they have, really, 
over the last three or four games. Here goes Laudrup. And he's won the corner of Gary Holt. Holt, who's played a great protective role for Kilmarnock. And continues to do so from this corner. Which is taken by Laudrup. Got flying in with a header. And it took a couple of touches. Negri just unable to get there. Nevin it was in the end who cleared it. This is Ferguson. Laudrup. And a testing cross for Marshall, and he hasn't held it. And Goff with the goalkeeper out of position. Rescued by Nevin initially, but Tarr gets it in! And that is a splendid finish! Jonas Tarr capitalising on the uncertainty as Marshall came and didn't conquer, and Rangers draw level. It was quite unbelievable. It's the first time loads up really in the first, uh, second half rather has been, been involved. Marshall came out, loads up, sorry, Goff tried to leave it. Marshall can't get back to his goal, great vision by Jonas Tell, has got to be said, and a super flighted ball in. So we're almost waiting for each other to have a goal, Marshall didn't get back onto his line quick enough, but great vision by Jonas Tell there, you can see it's superb from here. Everybody trying to get out, leaving the goalkeeper there. And Jonas Tell makes a one each. It was an excellently executed finish, there was a, a lot of confusion in the Kilmarnock area, as uh, Negri here is caught offside, but he certainly had to pick his spot, and there were a lot of bodies in front of him, and he bent the ball over beautifully, Jonas Turn. Yeah, that's got to be said to him, when you see the ball coming in, first really time Lodge has been involved in the second half, Marshall comes to get it, misses it, Goff actually tries to leave it, I think, to Rosenthal there, it's defended, and you can see Martin Baker bombing off his line, shouldn't have done that, leaves the goal completely bare, you can see Gordon Marshall's furious, but I wonder why Martin Baker tried to come off the line there, presumably to, to push out, to try and make it as though Rangers were going to be caught offside, but just in doing that, all he's done is leave the goal bare, and you want to the easiest task to put it in an open net. Well, come on it now, taking that as the signal to make a change, and off goes Jim McIntyre, and on into his place comes the Frenchman Jérôme Varay, who's figured in almost every game this season. The only one he's missed, the October defeat at Celtic. But he's coming on at a, a difficult time where Kilmarnock, having seemingly had the game in the palm of their hands, have just conceded an equaliser. And Rangers, who understandably have taken a long time to shake off the effects of seeing Gordon Jury taken away with a, a serious injury, have now got the goal that, for the moment, banishes thoughts of the first half breakdown in communication between Bjorklund and Gorham that led to Wright scoring. But it's Wright with the ball at his feet again from this free kick. They're protesting at the distance of the three-man wall. Laudrup, Ferguson and Turn taking up residency and refusing to be shifted. Wright has to get it through! And Gorham was equal to it. He's a good striker of a dead ball. This Rob, as you were saying there, were protesting about the wall. That told you right away that Paul Wright was already thinking in his head of having a strike, hit it well. Andy Gordon was equal to that one. It was a real daisy cutter from Paul Wright. He'd been hoping, presumably, that a little divot in front of Gorham might just take it away from the goalkeeper. But Gorham kept his concentration. Here's Ferguson. This is Johansson. Loudra. Rangers now really testing Kilmarnock's resistance and Laudrup has got through and he got it through Marshall as well and behind him it was McGowan who had to sort that one out. And here's Negri and he's brought it down with his hand. And another horrible moment there for Gordon Marshall. Well, really, Lloyd up suddenly get the grip of the game. We haven't seen a great much of him, really, but a good run to the byline here. But Gordon's catching fresh air. My goodness, it's a good job McGowan's foot was there. And it looked as though Negri would have an easy tap in, but just over the last five or ten minutes, he hadn't had a great deal to do, Gordon Marshall, so far in the game, really. And the last couple of times, my goodness, he's been a little bit shaky. It's been a real up and down night so far for Gordon Marshall.
Marshall, who has Rangers and Celtic as part of his history, started his career at Rangers, made a series of unsuccessful title challenges while at Celtic, and really gave hope that uh, Celtic might be at the top of the table tonight with the assist that led to the first goal, the long punted clearance. But it was his failure to collect Laudrup's cross that led to the equaliser and failure to collect another Laudrup ball that almost led to a second. It's another change here now for Kilmarnock and Paul Wright is the player going off to be replaced by Mark Roberts. You know Mark Roberts very well in a, a, a very short time here at Kilmarnock, a very, very talented youngster indeed. Has scored a few goals for them and just with fresh legs with Roberts and Varai coming on the lead. I think Bobby Williamson knows that they're not particularly steady at the back at the moment, Rangers, and he's been looking for those fresh legs to put them under his pressure as much as they can. Bobby Williamson hoping that the fresh legs of Mark Roberts can do the trick. The player who's come through the youth ranks. They showed such faith in him that they gave him his debut at 16 years of age. Here's Landry. Johansson's cross and Marshall had to be sure again and could only punch clear. Nevin. Nevin running himself in circles, conceding a throw in in an area from where Rangers could benefit. Those fresh legs have certainly worked there. Jerome Varai nipping in in front of Perini. Just managed to get the ball, Perini brings him down. Varai back on his feet and ambling forward. Space here for John Henry to exploit. Turn coming across to close him down now. McPherson. Jonas Turn. Jerome Varai and taken down by Perini. There were other defenders back there covering, but there is going to be a card here for Perini, and it's a yellow one. Absolutely right. Well, he's only done this literally 30 seconds before, hasn't been got away with it. And this time, Varai striding on Perini late with the challenge, and this time he finds himself into Bobby Orr's book. It's not been a dirty game, Rob, really, but certainly the, both, both bookings have probably been deserved. Well, now Paul Wright for the free kick this time so Kevin McGowan has uh, opted to seize control of the situation Mark Riley has got a sweet left foot to his, to his left although McGowan is going for it and again Gorham is behind it that one not as troublesome as Wright's earlier effort no, I'm more hopeful than anything else never seen the big man score from there in my life and nothing's changed my mind from there Perini. John Henry fouled by Jonas Turn. Good control by John there. Turn a little bit impetuous, certainly brought him down. And all of his stops going to help come on up here, Rob. There's another one is going to you. Yeah, he's going to book him. Yeah, it's Johansson. He's shown the yellow card. I mean, probably the softest booking all night. I mean, there wasn't a great deal in that. Hope Bobby Orr doesn't lose it for every challenge he's going to book him. Certainly nothing in that there. 
A little bit of professionalism on Pat Nevin's part, we'll just put it down to that. Using his experience, I think they would say, would they? Taken by Baker. Fergus. Here's Vidmar. He's made some useful inroads since he came on for the second half. But uh, Henry putting up the no entry signs then. Moore. Goff. Turn. Rangers with everyone except Andy Gorham inside their opponent's half. Goff has just pulled back now. McPherson. Perini. The draw would be very much two points dropped in Rangers' case. They, you do sense, have to go for the win here tonight. In every sense, there's no question about it, Rob. We don't go for away draws at this time of the season. Got to say it'd be a, a point game for Kamal. There's no question about that. And I think half of Edinburgh and half of Glasgow will jump out their seats if it stays like this. Seasons when they've made slip ups, they've had a big enough points gap at the top of the table to take care of it. But this time, two rivals breathing down their necks, and Rangers desperately needing the victory. And this is another great break which doesn't have a great finish to it from Vidmar. Since he's come on, I mean, he certainly he loves to drive in for a big defender. I mean. From the space in front of him, he certainly drives in. Unfortunately, uh, he's not the best finisher in the world, is he? Reminder of our midweek FA Cup action for you. It's Barnsley against Manchester United in our FA Cup special Wednesday at 7.30 on Sky Sports 2. Replay for Mokwell. Of course, Kilmarnock, the Scottish Cup holders, but... Uh, they won't be retaining that trophy this season. Beaten by air. But they're in a position of respectability at the moment in the league. Fourth in the table. Baker. Jonas Tuck. This is Vidmar, Rosenthal. Laudrup. but Johansson has kept it in play and won the corner. Johansson taking up a position inside the six-yard box. Ferguson looking to locate Goff. Ferguson who drives it in, and now can Henry spring Kilmarnock clear, the rise forward calling for it, and now Nevin is bursting from the midfield, Roberts is up in support too, and it's Rosenthal who comes back with a heavy back pass that Gorham controls well. Bobby Williamson will be livid there with Jerome Varai, Pat Nevin's bust have got to try and support him there, and all he needs to do is play him in, and he tried to be a hero and take it on himself, and all he's done is given Rangers possession again. Bobby Williamson urging a mountainous effort from his troops. 
in the closing seven minutes of this match to win a game that they thought they'd perhaps won already with that uh, first half goal. Here's Varai. Roberts. Good work here from Kilmarnock. Riley beyond Henry. And a good clearance by Goff. Brian Lauder. Good challenge by Holt. And great work from Gary Holt. And the offside flag goes up. Must have been very tight, but Varai is flagged offside. That must have been very tight. They've got to see it was superb play by Gary Holt. He didn't go to ground. A great challenge on Brian Lauder. Shows great feet there. Oh yeah, he was offside. Most definitely offside. You see it great from the from the camera angle there, but just when it happened, I thought, my goodness, that's tight, but it was a correct decision by the linesman. Or assistant referee, I should say. Montgomery. Henry. Here's Goff. Ferguson. Jonas Turner. McPherson. There's Ferguson again. Rosenthal. Negri, he's got the turn in well, and he had Marshall scrabbling across to get there, and it was deflected on route. He only needs a half chance, doesn't he? It looks as if there was nothing on there. First time Rosenthal's touched the ball for about five minutes, Rob. Managed to squeeze the ball, you see here, good control there, squeezes the ball through to Negri. Half chance turn, a little deflection. Thank God Marshall would have got there, but it would have went in. Focus. Johansson. Ladra. Perini and Goff. And more all in there queuing. And they've run the corner. And Jonas turn goes across to take it. Richard Goff. Always a big threat. And Goff had made his move, but it's cleared by Henry. And looking for more here. It's gone harmlessly out for the goal kick. Four minutes to go, and there will be plenty of stoppage time. That's very true, Rob. The world has been a lot of changes. Good, got to say in that corner there, Walter Smith will be absolutely livid with Jonas Till. You get your big guys in, you have a bit of pressure on your opposition and it's a bad, bad corner and you don't clear the first defender and that's really not what you want. And another substitution with Ali Mitchell now coming on to take the place of John Henry who's worked tirelessly in that midfield area. They haven't done well, worked very, very hard in midfield, come on, not to give any room at all and the man they're bringing on right now, he can run for... 120 minutes easy and okay he's only got five or so minutes maybe possibly more to show what he can do but well Ali Mitchell who's come on did score in the match against Rangers at Ibrox to level the score at one all but we'll remember as well as anyone that they were sunken in the last five minutes by three goals that they felt gave the score a very unfair look More. 
fuck off. Negri. Here's Ferguson. Good play from Ferguson, looking for Negri at the far post. He's always looking to sneak into those areas to poach the goal. Good one here from Barry Ferguson there, checks in, takes it away, crosses the back foot, just a little bit too much in it though. Well, is this Kilmarnock defence going to hold out? And the other question for you, Alan, is who's going to be your man of the match? Yeah, well, it's going to be, it's pretty tight, really. You've got to see, I'm, I'm going to go with Raymond Montgomery. You know, he hasn't been playing in the team, he showed a real captain's role tonight in managing to snub out, basically, Rosenthal and Negri. I think they haven't been had any snip at all, and him and McGowan have played really well, but I've got to give it to Raymond Montgomery as my man of the match tonight. He's been superb. And it's Goff who's played the piercing ball through to Ladrup, and Marshall came and did it up. But can't afford to take any chances. They did better there, Gordon Marshall. They had to come, of course, Lucky for him, he was still in the box when he touched it with his hands and did the sensible thing and just played it out. Can't score from out there. Approaching stoppage time and a reminder that we do expect there to be plenty of that. It's Ferguson, blocked by Nevin. Perini. Confirmation of the man of the match, Ray Montgomery. Yeah, he's done really well tonight, he has. He ha he's only just come back in, hasn't he, because Jim Lachlan's out with the flu. But he definitely has played a major role in that defence for Kilmarnock. Holt. Nevitt. Negri here looking to get in. Well, the Rangers' front line still bustling away, trying to uh, produce the goal that will give them a more comfortable look at the top of the table, but with Celtic and Hearts having home games tomorrow, one point clear at the top won't look too comfortable at all, and frustration here for Ladrup as the throw-in verdict goes against him. Yeah, I mean, the clock... And the big scoreboard, Robert, says 90 minutes, but I think you're guaranteed it's going to go 93, 94, 95 with the amount of stoppages we had. So this game is most definitely not over yet. I'm sure Bobby Orr picture there is going to add a few minutes on. And as I say, the game's not finished, although Kamarnock have defended well, but Rangers over the last five or six minutes have certainly had possibly a little bit more of the possession and pushing them back. Carini with a back pass. Pitmar and given away and Varai here tried to slip Roberts through but he's flagged offside it's a little impetuous here. it's not a bad ball from Varai it's just that Mark Roberts had definitely stayed offside there you can just see actually good play by I think that's Goff there who steps out just to make sure he's offside More. And Goff is staying exclusively in the attack now. Rangers applying all their resources into attack, and whenever that policy is employed, there are always risks. Although they aren't apparent for a moment, as the ball has been given away to Rosenthal, and he's been bungled over by McPherson. That was anyway, anyhow there, Rosenthal had got clear. He's actually bundled into, yeah, you're right, by McPherson there, just to make sure he didn't get away, but by giving three kicks away, certainly in this area, defending's not finished for Kamarnock. Turn with a free kick. 
and headed away to Josh McPherson. Anywhere will do at the moment for Kilmarnock. They'll be quite happy to hold on for a point here. It's part of a sequence of three games in four against the top three. They've played Celtic, here they are, attempting to hold Rangers after a match with Aberdeen, they've got hearts to come. They're holding the leaders at the moment. And that clearance by Montgomery, who's played a full part in that. But can they keep it going to the end? Goff. Jonas turn, one goal to his credit already. Here's Johansson. Four in the box here for Rangers, if he can get it across. Perini and Goff were both there, and Holt squeezed in between them. Laudrup here trying to provide, it came off him last. It's gone for the goal kick, and one or two Rangers players, Goff and Rosenthal, notably holding their heads, thinking that might have been their last chance. Well, it's not been his night tonight, hasn't it? We've expected a lot from him, as you do from Brian Laudrup, because he has set good standards. It just hasn't gone from tonight. He's got the cross in. Good block by Gus McPherson, but it came back off of Gus, back onto Brian, and Timley out for a bike kick. Good result for Kamal at that. But not a very happy birthday for Walter Smith. His side held to a one haul draw here at Rugby Park. Paul Wright scoring the first goal after a dreadful mix up in the Rangers defence. Jonas Turn rescuing something from a terrible evening, really, for Rangers. It started badly when Marshall's clearance completely caught up Bjorklund, unaware of Gorham's position, he gave Wright an easy chance, and he took it. But Rangers did battle their way back into the game when Marshall's error left the goal unattended, as Baker pulled out, turn, executed this magnificently. But it was all overshadowed by a nasty injury to Gordon Jury, knocked out and taken away, a very sad sight that overshadowed proceedings, the final score... It's Kilmarnock 1, Rangers 1. It's a hard night for Rangers at Rugby Park and not a very satisfactory outcome. They've got something out of the game. A 1-1 draw, much better result for Kilmarnock though and for the rest in Scotland, of course. A couple of Rangers booking second half, Perini and Johansson to add to the tale of woe on the injury front. Ray Montgomery was man of the match for Kilmarnock but he also was booked. Squeeze into the middle third for the most half. Not too much by way of attacking second period from Kilmarnock. Rangers vastly dominant in terms of possession. And sadly, Gordon Dury of Rangers knocked out, as you saw during the course of play, and the official line is that he has been taken to hospital for treatment. Trevor Stephen and Charlie Nicholas watched it with me. First up, uh, Trevor, five points out of 12 for Rangers now. Yeah. What does that tell you about the state of their title challenge? That's, uh, those are getting serious statistics uh, for Walter Smith and his, uh, and his team. Um, it's not championship winning form by any stretch of imagination and tonight they really needed three points to, to give them that psychological boost to, to wake up tomorrow morning and be clearly comfortably ahead of Celtic and Hearts but the great winners tonight of course apart from Kilmarnock getting the point are Celtic and Hearts. Charlie one wonders the way the game went overall with the injury problems and yep. the, the manner of the performance are, are Rangers just pleased to get something out of it? I think they'll be a bit happy uh, in, in terms of the look back now because they didn't really create much at all Paul two attempts in target which is a poor record for Rangers and I have to say Rangers and their big time players look a tired bunch. Wasn't much going into the game for Kilmarnock to, to look at and say hey we do well against this yeah. Team time and again, Trevor, but it, from the start it did seem a different story tonight, didn't it? Yeah, well, Kamani always set the stall on to, to make it difficult for opposition. And um, you know, from the first whistle, they, they made sure it was uh, not going to be an easy ride for Rangers and they had the, the early opportunity and um, never really created a great deal through the game. Andy Gorham was never really troubled. But uh, you could say the same about Gordon Marshall at the other end. A lot of play around the midfield area, and uh, that was a Jonas Turn effort, which was. A good effort, he doesn't get many shots in target, but uh, you know, that, that was near enough. A lot of changes to the Rangers starting side tonight. Do you feel it took some time to start to work together? I think it just didn't work from the moment Paul Gascoigne uh, took that injury. But uh, you know, the flow and the balance of the team was already a little bit suspect of Perini, as I said, uh, at left back. But with Gascoigne not being able to contribute, uh, I don't think Jonas Turn is, is the sort of player who can, uh, who can take the game 
you know, by the scruff of the neck. Doesn't change the pace of the game, and Rangers needed to up, lift the pace. He got a goal, he got an equaliser tonight. I was really disappointed with Rosenthal. I thought he looked a couple of yards short of match fitness. It will take him time, but he's got to be sharper than that. And again, I think Richard Goff, who tries, he never fault his effort. Looks a, a little bit jaded. Goffy didn't have any summer's rest last season. And at the back, they're all over the place at times. Loudrop looks tired. He doesn't look as if he's got the freshness after making a big decision in his career. And you would have to say that man there, Gascoigne, once he went off, you, you just felt that the imagination wasn't quite there the way it is when he plays. Maybe this is the reason for the Gascoigne injury we feel. Yeah, we, we don't know how serious that one is, but uh, it looks fairly innocuous, but you know, that's uh, another challenge there with Gordon Jury. We, you know, we hope that he's, he's going to be OK. That was the first actual cross that Loudrop managed to get. He did come to life in the last third of the game, didn't he? Yeah, he did. But, you, know, you might say about time too, and, and this was a rush of blood from Martin Baker, Charlie, wasn't it? It was. They'd be disappointed. I mean, Gordon makes an initial mistake. But it looks as if they've got out of trouble. You see Baker, everybody floods off the line. They should be aware of the goalkeeper. And, you know, basically there's not a lot Gordon Marshall can do after that. Turn needed something like this, to, terrible pun, but to turn for him in his Rangers career. Well, it, is it, that fair? It, it does. I mean, he's, he's been lacking any real inspiration for the team so far. I believe he has been struggling with injury. But tonight, I have to say again, Rangers don't look as fresh as what they have to be at this time of the season. And that's a concern for the fans. One other result in Scotland tonight, Dundee United 1, Hibernian 1. Andy Dow with an own goal to put Dundee United in front on 73 minutes. John Hughes levelled it just two minutes later, so a valuable point for Hibernian away from home. Here's the table tonight, then Hibs still bottom, but they've just clawed back a little bit of the gap to Motherwell. And at the top, Rangers now a point clear of Celtic and Hearts. Uh, just a word on Hibernians performance tonight. You feel yeah. they could get out of trouble, don't you? I've got a feeling they can, and they're getting a draw at Tanadice tonight. It's a big result for them. They're going to put Mullow under pressure. We're interested to see how they do against St. Johnson tomorrow night, but they've got Mullow and Dunfermline meet each other on Saturday, Paul. So Hibs are at home to Celtic, so they're still in there battling. I think they've got a great chance. Why do you feel McLeish went from one struggling club to another, Trevor? Well, Hibernian are a bigger club than Motherwell, there's no doubt about it. But uh, he is faced with some really difficult matches in the, in the first few games. But uh, as Charlie says, I think they might be able to do it. It looks, you know, both ends of the table. Tomorrow night, then, it's the turn of Celtic and Hearts. Celtic at home to Dunfermline. Hearts at home to Aberdeen. Both will look to put pressure on the Rangers boss, Walter Smith. And he's talking to Davy Proffitt. Well, Walter, how did you see what was uh, clearly a very hard-fought draw here tonight? Well, it was a hard-fought draw. I felt we contributed to, to our own downfall in, uh, in terms of the draw. Um, you know, we started the game well enough, a territorial advantage, uh, obviously a bad mix-up for the goal, and that allowed Kilmarnock to sit back. We had one or two opportunities uh, in the first half that we should maybe have done better with, uh, which could have, uh, you know, given us a lead and changed the game because I feel, you know, if Kilmarnock had to come out and, uh, and as that would be an advantage to us. But as it was, they sat in and it, it took us a while to break them down, and uh, they defended well for the most part of the game, and it took a, uh, you know, as honest turn goal to, to get us the draw. What actually happened at the goal you lost? Did uh, Jockey Brooklyn get a shout from Andy Gorham? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I never really asked. It was just one of those, you know, it usually happens. Goalkeeper out, you know, and a header back over the top of him. So uh, it was an unfortunate mix-up from my own point of view. Would you accept, though, that you can't continue to give teams a goal of a start against you? Oh, well, we can't do. I mean, uh, you know, we have been living a little bit like that. Uh, you know, it was one of those that, as I say, territorially we had Pinko Manock in in the early part of the game, and it was only the ball over the top uh, that was maybe causing us a little problem. But uh, we were happy enough with that until the mix-up. I think we're all concerned down here that Gordon Jury was taken to hospital with uh, quite a bad head knock. What is the latest on that? Well, it's a concern to us all, obviously. He's uh, unconscious at the present moment, or was when he left the stadium. And he's been taken to hospital, so we'll just have to wait and see how he is. Well, we hope for good news on that front, Walter. Thanks. OK, thank you. Here, here. Right, this game, the uh, goals of the game, Charlie. Yep. This terrible mix-up between Bjorkland and Gorham. Not the first time it's happened no, they've this been, season. They've been involved in a few in the past. Not as blatant as this. I just thought, I mean, Bjorkland's got pace. Paul Wright was struggling to keep up with them. You see, it's in control for me. And I don't think Andy needs to come. Uh, but just, if he's given a call, I have to say, then you know the defender should always listen to the keeper. I was about to say, Trevor, as a layman, is he heading it toward the goal or in any event, or is he heading it wide of the goal? What would you say about that? 
Yeah, you know, uh, I think it, the the blame does lie with Andy Gorham there. I think he just made a wrong decision. I think uh, Bjorklund's done what he could. He couldn't. The ball was up in the air. He couldn't really afford to take his eye off the ball, and he has headed it back wide of the goal as it happens. Um, you know, not, let's not forget that uh, uh, Mr. Wright there has just done what he had to do, chased it up, and it was tight angle and slotted it into the net. He still had a job to do after that. He had a nightmarish first half. That apart, didn't he, Bjorklund, and he yeah. was substituted at half-time. Yeah. Was that the right thing to do? do well, you the, whole, the whole defensive uh, line didn't look right. They started to play this, uh, you know, the four at the back, and uh, that's not been the system throughout the season. And when Perini's, for the first time, I believe, gone out there and played on the left, he didn't look comfortable at all. And uh, Bjorklund and him did not have uh, any sort of uh, communication at all. It looked uncomfortable. Let's get a word with the Kilmarnock boss, Bobby Williamson. Bobby, given you had a record against Rangers so far this season, are you reasonably happy with a point tonight? Well, it's good to get a point. To be fair, Rangers dominated the game, Davy, and uh, we've got to be lucky we've got a point. But at this moment in time, I think we're all concerned about Gordon Jury and just hope he's, he's OK and feeling for him and his family tonight. Have you heard anything on that front? I've not heard anything at all, Davy. Uh, last time I seen him, he was, he was going down the track, and uh, as I said, we're all concerned. Gary Holt obviously took a, a bad knock in the collision as well. How's he? Yeah, Gary's got a couple of stitches in the back of his head and uh, he's taking a few aspirins for the night. Uh, he's just got a splitting headache, really. Hard fought game, wasn't it? Yeah, there was no quarter given or, or asked for, and that's, that's what we've got to do week in, week out in this league. Uh, very difficult for Rangers tonight with us sitting in so much, uh, but they put you under so much pressure with a full backs pushing on, you have to sacrifice a striker to get back into them. And uh, we try to close down their space, and that's what you've got to do against the best teams. OK, Bobby, thanks for your time. Cheers, David. Trevor, did you see Rangers getting level? Um, I thought it was going to be a, a, a fluke or a, 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 some sort of mistake that might get them back into the, into the game. And, and it sure really enough. did turn out like that. Lowdrop got the ball in really for the first time in the game. Gordon Marshall just gets in front of Negri. It's all a bit scrappy, ends up with Rosenthal. And this is the decisive moment. Um, Martin Baker has decided to come past, rushing past his goalkeeper who's off the line. And Jonas Turner's lofted the ball into the net. And it was an empty, empty net. One of Walter Smith turned to his assistant and said, told you we'd signed a goal scorer. <laughs> Critical goal, certainly for him. Overall, Charlie, the level of this performance by Rangers, how would you compare it to, to previous seasons when we've watched them grinding out results on the way to a championship? Well, I don't think the signs look good for Rangers at this moment, I have to say. I think when they keep asking to come from behind, it becomes mentally tiring. And I think they're looked at tonight. I look at Celtic, there's a freshness, there's a zip about them. Hearts have came back from two goals down on Saturday and they're starting to believe they can score a lot of goals. I think Celtic and Hearts tonight can look down and say, if we're up for their games when it comes against Rangers and we get results, we can go on and win this Bells Championship. No one's better placed to comment than yourself, Trevor, because mm. you've been in that Rangers side that's... Mm -hmm. I think you won five or six of those championship medals uh, of the nine. Yeah, I've, I lost count actually. But, uh, <laughs> it was easy for you to say. <laughs> so what about the current? <laughs> what about the current crop finally? Um, struggling at the struggling at the moment, and they need to find something very very quickly because the impetus lies with Celtic and Hearts. They can uh, they can see the uh, finishing line, and, and they're going for it. Mm. You know, they're getting towards that last uh, uh, ten games, and um, you know, they're going to dig in. Big game coming up on Saturday. Two big games uh, tomorrow night with uh, both Celtic and Hearts playing. Um, so all to play for. OK, Trevor, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks also to Charlie as Nicholas, as ever. And just to remind you, Gordon Dury, he's in all our thoughts. He was taken to hospital, knocked out, and he is receiving treatment in hospital right now.